In this video tutorial, I'll show how to implement different abatement measures in a Geisha model to minimize the effects due to changes in land use. Four different abatement measures will be demonstrated. I'll add a detention basin, a wetland area, an infiltration basin, and a buffer strip. First, I'll open an existing Geisha project. In this model, a portion of the watershed was converted to industrial land use. We will see which abatement measures are most effective at offsetting the increase in runoff due to the land use change. The first abatement measure I'll add is the detention basin. I duplicate the original Geisha coverage in project for the detention basin analysis. I'll load an image showing the location of a possible detention basin into WMS. Using the image as a guide, I'll digitize an embankment arc. A node is also created and reassigned an elevation that matches the grid cell that it is in. Since the node elevation was changed, the stream arc upstream of the node needs to be smoothed out to eliminate adverse slopes. The detention basin, culvert, and weir properties can now be entered at the node. Since the vertex spacing was changed when the streams were smoothed, the stream vertices have to be redistributed. Now I save the detention basin project. The wetland abatement measure is next. So once again, the original Geisha coverage and project are duplicated. An image that shows a possible wetland location is then loaded into WMS. And a polygon representing the wetland is created. The wetland parameters are then assigned. And the Wetland Geisha project is created from the original Geisha project and then saved. The infiltration basin abatement measure is next, so the original Geisha coverage and project are duplicated again.
A new index map is created from the Combo Residential Index Map. The new index map will be modified for the infiltration basin later. I load an image showing the location of the infiltration basin in WMS. And the grid cells overlapping the infiltration basin are selected and assigned a unique index map ID of 100. This will allow us to change the infiltration parameters for these cells. Turning the contours back on shows that the cells overlapping the infiltration basin have unique values. The modified combo index map is then used for the infiltration parameters in the map tables. And the parameters for the infiltration basin are assigned. The infiltration basin Geisha project is then saved. The final abatement measure is the buffer strip, so I again duplicate the original Geisha project and coverage. A new index map is created from the LU residential map. and an image showing the location of the buffer strip is loaded into WMS. The cells overlapping the buffer strip are selected and assigned a unique index map ID of 200. The modified land use residential index map is then used for the roughness parameter in the map tables. And the roughness value for the buffer strip is assigned. The buffer strip project is then saved and all of the projects are saved as a group. Geisha is then run for all of the projects. After Geisha finishes, the output hydrographs can be viewed. I'll modify the x-axis for a better comparison. By comparing the hydrographs for the different scenarios, I can see that the detention basin was the most effective abatement measure.